Welcome all. This is lecture 2 of module 2 in traffic engineering and today we are going to discuss about speed and delay studies. In the last lecture, we discussed about the objectives of performing dynamic traffic studies in traffic engineering and had a detailed discussion about the first traffic study which was spot speed. So we define what is meant by a spot speed, what are the applications of performing such spot speed studies and had and also looked into the stepwise approach towards the conduction of spot speed. Okay, so please recall how do we select ideal location, time period, number of samples, the data collection methodologies, suitable methods, data representation, analysis and result interpretation. Couple of numericals also was looked into it to strengthen the concepts delivered. So this session we are going to talk more on speed and delay studies or we can call it as travel time and delay studies. Speed, travel time, delay are considered as qualitative indicators of performance of traffic facilities. We need to understand that. When we talk about traffic facilities, every traffic facility has to be assessed for its performance. How, what is the level of comfort it is providing to the users when they are using this kind of traffic facilities. So there are two approaches in which one can assess the performance. One is something called as a quantitative approach. So to make it simple, let's understand that every traffic facility has its own capacity. So under that given prevailing conditions or the operation condition, whether it is exceeding the capacity or is it well below the capacity, that is the approach for a quantitative measure. So we depends more on quantitative parameters like volume, density and so on. Whereas when we talk about a qualitative measures, we need parameters to indicate the quality of travel. So the quality of travel generally being expressed by the time taken to travel or by the speed with which you were able to travel or the amount of delay. Did you delayed by five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes? It indicates the quality of your journey. So that's what speed, delay, travel time has been considered as qualitative indicators. Now, um, when we say travel time, we are actually defining as the amount of time required to travel from one point to another point on a given route. Now, if you know the distance between these two points, one can actually get the speed also. So that's how speed is associated with the travel time. Now, when we discussed about the spot speed, we have looked into only one point that is like, what is the speed of the vehicle at that instant? So at that point on the route, what was the speed with which the vehicles were traversing? We never intended to know that whether it's going to be different, you know, throughout the journey or a an, or a, over a given stretch that was not interested. We were not even interested to know about is there any additional time the vehicle has been spent because of some other reasons, you know, not beyond his control. So some kind of delays, we never looked into it. The intention of performing sports speed studies are different. Now, we, uh, by this time, we know that fact that covering two points, suppose A to B, assume it as X distance. Now, let's divide this X meters into substructures, say X1, X2, X3. Now, because of the some reasons on X1 obstructions or the there was so much intense traffic volume, so the congestion was happening, it was moving at the V1 speed. When it comes to the X2 stretch, it was covering with a greater speed of V2. But when it comes to again V3, it was, uh, you know, considered as a signalized intersection and it was red phase and vehicle was completely brought to rest. So you can see that there will be a difference in speed at different stretches and there are different types of obstructions also facing. So to, we need to represent the speed variation of vehicles when it is traversing a given road. So that is the intention or that is the idea behind which we perform speed and delay studies to represent the variation in speed of vehicle when it's traversing a stretch of road. So when we talk about travel time here, it is the total time of travel, including all these stops, all the delays which is faced by the vehicle when it is traversing from one point to another point on a given route under the existing traffic conditions. Now let's understand these terminologies, uh, you know, speed, delay, travel time, little more detail. All right. So what is delay? Delay is defined as the 
extra time it is a time lost because we are losing that time extra time additional time spent by the drivers against their expectation because that's beyond our control that is why it is written as against their expectations now what are the reasons for delays it varies for example uh, each delay is identified based on its kind of reasons which is causing the delay so there can be different forms of delay and this delay vary from locations to location facility to facility it varies generally speaking the reasons can be external side frictions internal within the flow itself internal frictions or can be due to traffic control devices so what is that when there is um, we explained already when there is in a signalized intersection if the signal is red we may have to wait for the green uh, to the green phase to come to clear the intersection so you are losing your wait time you are waiting for an additional time period to clear the intersection similarly when we say internal frictions just think that when you are moving there is uh, you know um, slow moving vehicles are ahead of you you are unable to move with the desired speed or there are a couple of public transport ahead of you are unable to clear it unable to move getting to the desired speed so you are reducing your speed or as if there is some kind of delay just assume that the bus is stopped in front of you to board uh, board the passengers so you are waiting for some time period or there is congestion happening suddenly capacity of the road is reduced from four lane to two lane so a queue started forming and you are in the queue so you are in the congestion and you are waiting for additional time period to clear from it so these are internal frictions when we say side frictions it can be generally considered as you are moving and a pedestrian is trying to cross so you may have to yield for the pedestrian and you are waiting for some time period or when you are moving there is some kind of parking maneuver is happening from the sides of an on street space so from there there is you know some kind of delay you are getting exposed to so the delay can be of can be caused by various reasons so for a traffic engineer it is must to collect this information you know uh, perform delay studies and find out the location where which delays are happening and what kind of delays are happening what is the reason for it and amount of frequency of such delays because that can lead to the recommendations to improve the level of service improve the service quality of such facility now let's uh, define you know the various types of delays so delay is generally defined as uh, time lost by the vehicle due to causes beyond the control of the driver now there are various forms of delay well, let me introduce the terminologies operational delay when we say operational delay if the delay is caused by the impedance of other traffic impedance means it can be the friction friction caused from the other traffic it can be either within the traffic stream itself that is internal frictions or can be due to the external side frictions so we named many examples so um, resulting from a congestion delays or delays resulting from parking maneuvers pedestrians we are waiting for a turning moment or we are waiting on the minor road to get a clear gap to um, adequate gap to get merged to a um, major road so all these can be considered as an operational delay so when we are observing the delay identifying the nature of delay is also important so such types of delays are called as operational delay now the second one is called as a stopped time delay this is actually not a reason this is the part of the delay during which the vehicle is at rest when the vehicle is not moving that is something called identified as a stopped time delay uh, to make it clear let's take an example of a vehicle approaching a signalized intersection so when the uh, if the signal phase is red so you and if there is a queue existing you may have to merge in the queue so you may be slowly decelerating your vehicle from the you know the traveling speed and then brought your vehicle to rest and wait for your time period till it uh, turns green and when it takes green you will slowly accelerate your vehicle wait wait for your turn to clear from the intersection so there this is the total time lost you are having in an intersection signalized intersection but when you talk about stop time delay we are interested to know only those time period at that particular time period your vehicle was not moving or completely brought to rest that means in this case time loss due to deceleration of vehicle or acceleration of vehicle is not counted but we are interested to know about what was the time period in which the vehicle will be vehicle was at rest all right 
So the such types of delays are identified as stop time delay. The third one is called as a fixed delay. Fixed delay as the name indicates fixed. So that means it may be due to caused by the traffic control device, especially as traffic signals. So here the intensity of traffic volume doesn't matter. The interference, whether it is internal or external, doesn't matter because it's a fixed delay regardless of this amount of traffic or the interference present. It is fixed because it's caused by traffic control devices. Now, the another delay is called as travel time delay. This actually tells you the time difference of actual travel time when assuming it has a free flowing condition. That means uncongested free flowing traffic flow. How much would have been the time taken? Say I would have ideally taken 10 minutes, but because of these delays, I took 15 minutes to cover the same distance. So this time difference between the actual travel time and the travel time which have been really taken to traverse at an average speed to cover this journey. So that is what is travel time delay. So we need to identify what is the nature of delay to understand what is the root cause of this delays. Then only one can think of a, a you know, suitable recommendations to work on it. Now, similar to various types of delays, various types of speeds are also practiced in traffic engineering. Let us get introduced to various terminologies. One is called as a running speed. Another one is say called as journey speed. To make this concept clear, let's take an example. So think that you are traveling from point A to B and to travel this uh, A to B, assume that you have taken a total journey time of 10 minutes. So I'm calling it as the journey time, which includes all the time, including the delays if it has experienced from traveling from A to B, 10 minutes. Let's also assume that this A to B is like X meters. All right. Now, when you analyze, you understand that there was some two minutes of delay you have faced while traversing X meters from A to B. So though 10 minutes you have taken as the total journey time, there was two minutes which was wasted or it was the additional travel time and that is observed to be this two minutes. Now, so that means on an effective, if you just look into it, your vehicle was in motion actually not for the 10 minutes, it was actually for eight minutes, right? So eight minutes, the vehicle was moving two minutes it was the delay so eight plus two ten minutes was the total journey time now if i ask you the speed you maintain when you are driving actually driving for the eight minutes and the average speed when you are considering the whole ten minutes would be different right so you need to bring out the speed variation that is what we use running speed and journey speed so if you calculate your x meters divided by the running time when your vehicle was in motion, in this case, X meters divided by eight minutes will give you the running speed. Whereas if you're taking the whole journey time, X meters divided by the 10 minutes, which will give you the journey speed. I hope that's clear. Let's look into the definitions. So running speed is the average speed maintained by the vehicle over a given section of highway while the vehicle is in motion. That means to calculate running speed, first we need to calculate the running time, which is the journey time deducted by all the delays which are facing. All right. So as an equation, you can say the length of course divided by running time. So this running time is journey time minus delay. So length of course divided by running time will give you the running speed, which represents the average speed when you were really riding, when you were in motion. And the journey speed on the other side, it indicates the effective speed you maintained to cover between two points. When you say effective speed, it includes all the delays too. So it can be taken as distance divided by the journey time. All right. Uh, that journey time means it includes all the delays. Now, if I ask you which should be higher, running speed or journey speed, I hope you have said the right answer, which is running speed because you are 
if you look at the equation you know that since running speed is calculated from the running time which is in denominator which is always less than the journey time because we are deducting the delay in case delays are there so we are deducting the delay so the denominator will be lesser and you will get a higher magnitude it's that's the case of like looking into the equation or in otherwise you know think logically when you are having a section in which there is no delay you can the average speed you maintain when you are driving and the average speed when you are considering the whole section including all the delays would be different and which would be higher running speed will be higher than compared to journey speed so this is an example to indicate a travel time survey the result study sheet you can see the trip numbers here also you can see the uh, you know uh, this is the trip direction and this is the trip length that is 2.38 kilometer length and the trip uh, starting time is given end time is given so the trip of uh, 2.38 kilometer started at 8:53 am that is what is recorded and the ended by 9:02 am that means the journey time of 9 minutes and uh, there was some kind of delays have been faced the delay details have been given you know where the delay has been faced how much time here there is no delay but when you look at to the other um, location you can see some 4 seconds of delay and some remarks have been given which is typically the identification of it is that an operational delay so here you can see that there is 177 at one particular location 177 seconds and it's due to the signals and when you moved you know to the next in the section again the signal read 19 seconds again next signal again 25 seconds 21 seconds so all these are fixed time delays so i hope that's you know uh, you are getting a meaning of what is meant by it so in an average if you look at it the journey time has taken 9 minutes but when you analyze all these delay we'll be in a position to come to know that the running time was 49 4.9 minutes that means you know close to 5 minutes so you have lost around 246 seconds because of the delays you are not ideally speaking like around 4 minutes delay was there so the speed if you are calculating with respect to the running time and with respect to the journey time this is what we indicated by running speed and journey speed so i hope this is understood uh, you have got the point like why this kind of speed delay studies are important we need to identify you know where these delays are happening the reason of such delays the intensity you know uh, we need to do a number of trips you can see like trip number 1 trip number 2 where you can find out whether this is persisting or not the frequency of it and then think about recommendations to improve the scenario now let us introduce the other two popular speed which is time mean speed and space mean speed when we say time mean speed it is average speed of vehicles when they cross a point in a space during a specified time interval what is that it is simply the average of spot speed so we will find out what is the speed with which a vehicle traversing a given point on a section these individual speeds were taken for say for example if there are n vehicles and observations and average that speed so that average speed at that point in the space would be represented as time mean speed vt is generally denoted by a four time mean speed so average speed vt is equal to a summation of individual speed of vehicles divided by n observations n numbers all right but when we talk about space mean speed it averages the speed measurements over a space distance at an instant of the time so while having a comparison with the tms we can say time mean speed averages the speed over a point whereas space mean speed over a space so here i am interested to know about to travel this d distance what was the speed with which vehicle were traversing d distance for each vehicle we will be calculating this speed and average of that speed represents the speed over averaging the speed over space which is called as space mean speed generally denoted by vs now let's uh, look into the you know mathematically how do how we can derive an equation for space mean speed so consider there is um, a distance d right and the first vehicle takes t time to say or t1 time and its speed is v1 
Now, how do we get it? So, D stretch, I can note down what is the time of interval it has taken while entering and while leaving at entry and exit points. Take the time difference, which let it be T1. All right. So, it takes, say, for example, T1 time, T1 seconds or T1 minutes to complete this uh, D stretch. And this D divided by T1 will give you V1. Similarly, you need to calculate what is the speed for second vehicle, third vehicle, fourth vehicle, to the end vehicles. When you average the speed, that is what is space means speed. All right. Now, to derive an equation, um, how do we get it? So, first, let's calculate the T average, which I'm going to represent it as T bar. So, T1 is the time taken by first vehicle, T2 be the second, T3, T4, T5. In that case, I can take T averages sum summation of which is written here summation T i divided by n if there are n observation. Now we are going to slightly rewrite this equation. So 1 by n instead of writing T. So what is T? T we know as the distance taken divided by the time. Here the distance remains the same. And let's assume instead of this D as a unit distance. So I can write T average. Sorry, I made a mistake. It is uh, it's not d by t, it's we are calculating t, so it, it should be d by v, right, t is equal to, sorry, sorry for that error, yes, so uh, now we are assuming, so we know we need to calculate t average, so that means summation of individual time taken by all the vehicles divided by n, now we are going to rewrite for t as in terms of distance by v, because it's the same distance all the vehicles are covering that is the distance d stretch covering we are taking let's assume it as a unit distance so you can write t as d as 1 so in that case it would be 1 by v so instead of writing t one can write it as 1 by v so that's this equation 1 by n because it's an average into summation 1 by vi all right so that gives you only the t average we didn't get the v average yet now let's calculate what will be the mean speed. So what is the speed? Speed will be again distance by time, right? So we now got the T average. Now we know we are um, interested in talking about unit distance. So one can write it as D divided by T average and T average is already there with us. This unit, let's consider instead of D, it as a unit distance. So instead of writing D by T, you can write it as one by T average. So this 1 divided by the whole equation 1 by n sigma 1 by vi which when you are rewriting this n goes to the numerator and can write n divided by summation 1 by vi. Alright. I hope that is clear to you. So this is the equation for the space mean speed. Now which would be higher time mean speed or space mean speed. Please understand that space mean speed we are deriving based on the time taken for the vehicles to cover it. Right. We are associating the speed with respect to the time taken. So slow moving vehicle, think that how much is that, how the time taken for the slow moving vehicles, it will be always higher compared to fast moving vehicles because slow moving vehicles takes more time or they occupy more time in that space. So they occupy, they take more time to cover that space. So the space, space means we give, give weightages to the slow moving vehicles and hence it will always be lesser compared to the time mean speed. Now let's look into the relation of how these are uh, time mean speed and space mean speed are related to. So time mean speed is equal to space mean speed plus it's the standard deviation of you know how of the each individual measurements. So standard deviation divided by space mean speed. This is the relation. So if the so you can see that, you know, the time mean speed is always greater. The reason is, you know, a space mean speed weights the slow moving vehicle. Now, if the standard deviation is zero, then you can find out that, you know, both will be equal. So, uh, so it's about the difference in speed. So since space mean speed adequately represents the speed variations and all, it has been uh, widely used for studying all the traffic characteristics of a traffic stream. So when we use the relation, you know, Q is equal to KV, which we will introduce when we talk about traffic flow, what is meant by a traffic flow, fundamental traffic flow equations. We use the stream speed, which is generally the space mean speed. Now let's um, um, get an 
understanding about the applications of performing such delay studies we have introduced uh, what is speed what are the different speeds used in traffic engineering what is meant by delay what are the various types of delays now let's understand by uh, studying performing such kind of speed and delay study what are the objectives or applications of such studies so first of all yes to evaluate the quality of traffic movement because we already understood that the speed travel time delays are considered as qualitative indicators of performance of traffic study traffic facilities so to evaluate the quality of traffic movement along a route we need to study uh, speed and st uh, we need to perform speed and delay studies and which also helps in understanding what are the delays which are happening? Where are the locations at which delays are happening? What types of delays are happening? What is the extent, amount of these delays? So that is also another application of performing such studies. So this travel time and delay studies are generally used as planners or engineers to monitor the level of service. So as I said, there are six level of criterions are the service level levels you can say it's from a to f so where at present your facility is how it is performing so this travel time delay studies helps to understand that to monitor the level of service it can also be used as a tool to assist in prioritizing projects so we can find out um, if there are two projects and which one to prioritize first so we can look into these kind of operational measures and see like where delays are happening more or what is the amount of delays and if you are finding out uh, based on the study and you are rating it as level of service E and another project is like level of service B then you need to give immediate attention to the level of service E project right so you can if you have n number of project which are under consideration to prioritize the projects we can use this as a tool application of speed and delay studies help us to you and we can consider it as a tool to prioritize the projects now we can even compare the operational conditions suppose we are working on a project we implemented some of the measures to improve the scenario so before and after evaluation you know we can perform the same operational uh, we can perf perform the same studies and see like how the improved scenario after implementation so before and after improvement studies are also possible and not only this operational condition studying even we can think of performance of economic studies in the evaluation because when there is a scenario which we identified as we need to uh, the there are quite kind of delays are happening or its operational condition is worst then you can propose various measures various alternatives and you can think of this as an economic study say for example one may be of an intersection improvement one may be of a signal design implementation but each of these strategy comes with a different cost Right, so one can think of performing this uh, economic studies also and see like how the evaluation of traffic operation alternatives to reduce the intention of uh, uh, you know um, improving the travel time now uh, it can also help us along with these qualitative studies compiling with quantitative studies to give recommendation of improvements which is already you know we discussed like we we can bring out various improvement plans, various alternatives, economic studies of these alternatives. And once we implemented before and after studies, all these are possible with the application of speed and delay studies. Coming to data collection. So how do we perform a speed delay study? There are um, two ways it is possible. One is um, a method which we can use a test vehicle. That means we may have to move along with the traffic stream using a vehicle which is generally called as a test vehicle and there are other methods in which we don't have to move along with the stream we don't have to travel with the stream using a test vehicle uh, there are other methods possible without using the test vehicle so broadly one can classify as methods which are requiring a test vehicles and popular methods are floating car method average speed technique method moving observer method the methods which are popular under you know not requiring a test vehicles are elevated observer method license plate observations and interviews you know these methods are quite um, easy to perform and you know not that complicated when compared to the methods which is which requires a test vehicle we will start with the methods which does not require a 
test vehicle. So the first method, elevator observer method. So we can make out actually, you know, we are using manually observers and they are positioned at an elevated position to observe the traffic flow. So we will use observers which will be stationed on top of an elevated building to have a clear view of the moving traffic and they will be selecting vehicles randomly and the, they will literally trace the vehicle. That means follow the course of the travel along the road. We may have to note the time at which they are entering, you know, if there is a test section, say we are considering at X distance, what time they are entering, what time they are leaving. And if there is any type of delays are happening, what is the nature of, you know, what type of delay it is and what is the duration of delay and what time they are leaving. So these things are manually observing. So that is what using observers since, since to do that they have to be positioned in an uh, elevated position. So that is what you know very simple method. But there are yet a lot of limitations because it is first of all very difficult to identify such a place to observe without any obstruction of the moving traffic. And the second it should be the test section whatever you are considering it should be very small short so that we can record all this information in efficient manner and the time period because since it is manpower effort we may have to reduce the you know strain part of the manpower so it cannot be exceeding more than two hours and wherever the heavy traffics are there this methods doesn't work okay so this is a brief about the elevated observer method the second one is interview method where this method also does not require a test vehicle instead of observing all these data we would directly interact with the drivers and obtain the information from them so we can ask them about the travel time their experience about the delays they faced during the journey so maybe a large number of uh, data you know if you look uh, look into the scale of data large amount of data can be collected relatively in a short time but it requires you know um, cooperation of people but more importantly uh, the accuracy of the information they are providing that is questionable the other popular method without using test vehicle is uh, license plate matching method so we use observers and we made them to stand at entry and exit point of our test section so here observers can note down the registration number plate of vehicles which are entering and also note down the time at which they are entering the section and when uh, you know we can keep observers at exit point they can note down the time interval in which vehicles are leaving and the registration number plate so after the field data collection going to office we can reduce the data by matching the number plate and accordingly calculate the time occupied when they are covering the test set, the stretch <clears throat> so this is the license plate matching method um, this will give you an idea about the travel time of each of the vehicles and the average travel time Nowadays, this method has been, you know, um, automated by using character recognition software. So there are ANPR cameras that is automatic number plate detection cameras are available. And with the help of uh, character recognition softwares, these can be automated, which we will be discussing about another method, um, you know, under ITS practices uh, for data collection. Now we will discuss about those methods which uses test vehicle for the travel time data collection. Among that one popular method is floating car technique as the name indicates the car or the test vehicle floats with the traffic that means it moves along the traffic stream and collects the data. So here we need to ensure that the test vehicle moves on that particular route with the median speed of traffic movement. So for that, if the test vehicle overtakes as many vehicle as the test vehicles are passed by. So by doing so with n number of runs, um, we can ensure that you know the test vehicle approaches the median speed of the traffic movement on that route. Now in such a test vehicle, uh, apart from the driver, there will be observers. So uh, the observer, one observer, you know, uh, monitor the traffic flow and the others which records it, the delays, uh, you know, the identifies the nature of delay uh, and it, do, during the uh, journey in that particular test section. So uh, by the end of each run, they'll be in a position to calculate what was the time taken 
along that route from start point to the finishing point. So time taken to traverse the study, study section along with the delays and its duration will be recorded by doing so. And with n number of runs, you know, you need to do not, you cannot just stop with one run. You need to uh, do with a minimum number of runs. And by doing so, one can calculate the average time. Now, if you are thinking about the sample size or how many such um, a minimum number of test runs that has to be determined to do such kind of um, studies. We can use the same equations which we uh, discussed when we were talking about spot speed studies. So we said number of samples n is equal to z sigma by d the whole square. So here we used because we assumed the speed as uh, uh, no, follows a normal distribution. Here in such cases uh, for uh, uh, these kind of uh, speed and delay studies, we may, you know, end up sample with uh, maybe not more than 30. So we may not be uh, thinking about the same normal distribution. Instead, we will consider D distribution. So, uh, you know, that as, as I said, the study will be limited to less than 30 runs. That makes T distributions to be more appropriate. So we can use the same equation itself, but instead of Z, which corresponds to the normal distribution, Let's consider the T statistic which correspond to the confidence level and use the standard deviation and the allowable error. And one can calculate what is the minimum number of runs required for the completion of study. The other method is the average speed technique. Here, the driver of the test vehicle is instructed to travel at a speed that is judged to the representative of the traffic stream speed. So he would be traveling the length of the test section in the test vehicle at a speed that corresponds to the average speed of the traffic stream in his opinion. The observers in the test vehicle notes, uh, notes the time taken uh, to traverse the section at entry point, start the stopwatch at exit point of the test section, note down the time. So that gives you the time required to traverse the test section. Also, uh, other observers can note down the stop time, delays, the nature of delays, the duration of delays and all those additional uh, details can be recorded. And if we perform the test run is repeated for minimum number of times, then the average time can be recorded as the travel time. The other method is moving car, moving vehicle or moving observer method. So in this method, the driver of the test vehicles makes a round trip on a test section. Assume it has a road section which runs eastwards. So consider two sections here, XX and YY. The driver starts from XX, progress towards eastwards to YY section. And once he reaches this YY section, the driver turns the vehicle around, turns the vehicle and drives westward to section XX again. So this is meant by um, a round trip. Now, a number of test runs are made along the study stretch and there are group of observers to record the details. In generally, there will be three to four observers and each of the observer will take a specific task. For example, one observer can hold the two stopwatch. Now, he can note down what are the time at which uh, the vehicle reaches control points. When we say control points, means like intersections, bridges or any other fixed points which we would have noticed. And what is the time at which we are reaching the and using his another second stopwatch, he can also can uh, note down the duration of delays. If the vehicle has stopped, uh, what is the time duration of such delays can also be noted. The second observer can in note in details that uh, like what is the time at which you stopped, what, which was the location, the causes of these delays can be noted. Now, if there is a third observer, he has a specified task of counting vehicles. This is most important part of the study. So we will be counting the number of vehicles overtaking our test vehicle as well as overtaken by the test vehicles also. Both the counts will be noted by a third observer. A fourth observer will also count the number of vehicles traveling in the opposite direction in each trip. Every time a trip is made in each direction, the opposite direction, how many vehicles are traveling. So these are the most important informations we needed. From these inf informations data, we will be collecting average travel time by using an empirical equation. So please note down what are the important data points we need. We need a delay information, all the details. Beyond that, the number of vehicles overtaking, overtaken by the test vehicle, as well as the number of vehicles traveling in the opposite direction. 
all these are the major data required now let us look into the equation so how do we calculate the average journey time so always think that this is a round trip that means the vehicle are traveling from x to y xx to yy then yy to and back to xx again so here in two direction the journey time is going to be vary so we need to calculate the journey time for each of the direction so xy there will be one journey time and against the stream yx there will be another journey time so to calculate the journey time first we need to know about how much is the flow volume of vehicles so n number of vehicles per t time period this is the first parameter that has to be calculated so when we look into the equations you can see that numerator na plus n by and denominator is ta summation tw so this a w to make you know uh, the suffix a little easy so whenever um, w that stands with if the flow if the test vehicle moves in the stream flow direction then you can say it as w when the test vehicle travels opposite to the stream so stream is from x to y and we are moving against the stream from y to x that represents by against opposite that is a all right so we need to first calculate how much is the time taken for the test vehicle to reach from x to y that is in the direction of stream which is tw and against the stream from y to x that is ta the summation of these two will be the denominator now coming to the numerator first one is na na is the number of vehicles say for example the number of vehicles in the stream that is from x to y we are counting but when the test vehicle is traveling in the opposing street direction that is when test vehicles travels from y to x how many vehicles we have counted from x to y the average number of vehicles because the there will be different test runs we will make in each direction so we may have to average it that represents na now coming to ny ny we count when the test vehicle travels in the same direction of the stream that is from x to y now here there are two counts we are taking one is uh, the number of vehicles that passes the test vehicle or overtaking the test vehicle and the second count is number of vehicles overtaken by the test vehicle when it is moving from x to y so we need to subtract these two um, that is overtaking test vehicles minus overtaken test vehicles that will give you ny now if you are thinking why we are subtracting let me explain this point see again we are planning for one more video to see like you know how do we derive this result is this equation that's also very important so if it is not clear in this uh, maybe uh, you know this lecture we will have a detailed discussion about how the equations are coming in the next lecture so assume that from xx to yy the direction of traffic is from x to y so when the test vehicle starts at xx and traveling eastwards all vehicle traveling westward it should get to xx before the test vehicle but except those that are passed by the test vehicle when it is traveling westward right so we may have counted those vehicles when we are actually counting na so we may have to deduct it that is why we are deducting the number of overtaken vehicles so this is the equation to calculate flow once you have calculated the flow then you can calculate the t average average journey time which is tw so this is with respect to one direction so if we are saying from x to y then i need to know about the journey time which has taken to traverse from x to y with the stream so that is tw minus again ny because that represents the number of vehicles so again the same ny like you know minus you overtaking minus overtaken by the test vehicle divided by q which has been got for xy direction all right so this gives you the journey time average journey time corresponding to xy similarly for yx also can be calculated the journey time this is how we will do it um uh, with this we are winding up so beyond this um, we can one can make use of its technologies for the data collection so its is intelligent transportation system which is the application of uh, sensing analyzing control communication technologies to resolve uh, transportation issues 
So there have been several uh, ITS applications are the to collect the data collection, like to make the process automated. For example, the one we studied as uh, uh, number plate recognition, which can be done with the help of uh, automated, you know, number plate recognition cameras are the ANP and cameras and with the help of character recognition softwares one can get in and you can track the vehicles um, instead of noting down the test, you know, the arrival time and the departure time, you can note down the track, the vehicle position and its time at different multiple locations on a roadway. This is possible with the use of vehicle identifiers, you know, or data can be collected through GPS or blue, uh, any other Bluetooth devices is it's possible. Nowadays, it's a communication technology like vehicle to road infrastructure communication or vehicle to vehicle communication. Many things are possible. So that makes all these data collection more into the automated and analysis in a more, you know, integrated manner. So one can make use of ITS technologies too. So with this, we are uh, winding up our lecture 2 of module 2 which we discussed mainly about the speed and delay studies. So the um, uh, continuation of this lecture will be there as lecture 3 in which we will be deriving the equation of speed and delay study. You know how do we calculate average travel time using the moving car method and a couple of numericals will be solved. Thank you.